We arrived at Intersolar with high hope, tightly packed schedule, and just a hint of professionalism. We left with overloaded backpacks, mild dehydration, and Gary holding court at what used to be a demo stand, but now closely resembles a beer garden. By day, solar breakthroughs and bold claims. By night, Oktoberfest with solar panels. To the outside world, solar's been riding the solar coaster for years, but here in Munich, it's very much on the way up. Faster, louder, and surprisingly well stocked with cold lager. Who knew the energy transition came with beer tokens. Of course, these days, Intersolar isn't just about solar panels, it's part of the Smarter E, a sprawling expo covering everything to do with the energy transition. That means solar, battery storage, EV charging, and even the electrification of heating, all under one very bright, very busy roof. You'll find robots that clean solar panels, batteries the size of garden sheds, cables, and all kinds of gadgets designed to make installs quicker, neater, and maybe even a little smarter. To make your life easier, we did the legwork over 30 kilometers of it, 10 halls, and one heroic daily hike from the hotel, all to bring you a hand-picked selection of standout innovations and hidden gems from across the show. We got the beer and the blisters, so you didn't have to. The EV charging landscape continues to evolve, driven by the growing demand for smarter, more flexible solutions across homes homes, workplaces, and public spaces. Take Electrify by Hesotech, for example. You need a charger and a separate mounting post in many installations. But why not combine the two? Electrify has done exactly that, integrating the charger into a sleek all-in-one post. It's a perfect fit for residential driveways or car parks where clean lines matter. Of course, installing EV chargers in car parks often involves a fair bit of civils work, especially when running cables underground. That's where Filoform's modular mounting system comes into its own. It's designed Designed to make installation quicker and safer, and we were particularly impressed by their new anti-finger trap mechanism built into the cable duct lid. A small detail, but one that shows real installer-focused thinking. Want to skip the trenching altogether? Amp Society's bus bar-based distribution system offers a completely different approach. It's ideal for shared parking areas, delivering scalable modular power via a backbone system that can be post or wall mounted. It even integrates lighting and power management, making it a great fit for larger rollouts. And while we were in the halls, we caught our first look at the updated Zaptec Go. It looks similar to the previous version, but now includes a subtle graphic display and MOD class metering. These updates lay the groundwork for something much bigger, vehicle to grid, V to G capability. It's not here yet, but all signs suggest it's coming and fast. Then there's the practical side of EV charging, cable management. Trip hazards and messy installs are still an issue, especially in high traffic spaces. Two solutions stood out. First, the retractable cable cable, reel from bowels is perfect for garages and fleet charging points. Second, the extendable overhead arm from Cable Sherpa. Could this be the solution to getting cables across paths? One trend we're starting to see is that inverter and battery manufacturers are beginning to examine the EV charging space, especially at the larger scale. With growing demand for integrated solar, battery storage, and intelligent charging systems, we're seeing the early signs of a much more connected approach. On our way to the halls focused on inverters and battery storage, we couldn't resist a quick detour past some of the tool manufacturers. First up, Nipex, who've launched a new version of their popular Ergo Strip, this time specially designed for double insulated solar PV cables. It features an adjustable stop built into the base so you can set a precise strip length, ideal for prepping MC4 connector crimp. Wacon also make a dedicated solar PV stripper, which Rick has reviewed in the past. So this time our attention shifted to something new, a cable stripper for flat cables. According to Daniel on the stand, it's a solid contender for tackling the nemesis of UK electricians, XLPE Twin and Earth. He demonstrated the tool using a flat cable similar to those in the Polish market, and it handled it impressively. Naturally, Gary managed to extract a sample from Daniel's hands, so stay tuned to find out how it holds up when we try it out on the real deal back in the UK. Meanwhile, Gordon was drawn in by the Rolls-Royce of crimping tools, a glorious smorgasbord of smooth operating kit on the Weidmüller stand. As a massive fan of ferrules, everything was going perfectly until disappointed appointment struck. The culprit, a new screwless DIN rail terminal featuring snap-in technology, operates like a mousetrap, doesn't need a tool, and most shockingly doesn't need wire ferrules. While we're on the subject of tools, let's discuss one of the most expensive parts of any solar installation, scaffolding. We spotted an innovative approach from Mordera, a system designed to provide easy-to-use edge protection that could reduce the need for full scaffolding in some installations. But what really caught our eye was the Bavaria ladder lift, a drill-powered hoist that lifts so solar panels up to the roof line quickly and safely. It is compact, efficient, and genuinely installer friendly. Like a gazelle, Gary leapt onto the demo unit, so check out the short video to see how it works in action before leaving the
the roof, we found a clever solution for installers working on tiled rooftops. Grinding out slots for mounting brackets can be a slow and messy process, but Roder's DZF roof tile milling cutter makes it much easier. It creates precise grooves and can be adjusted to suit different tile and bracket depths. A unique mounting bracket allows you to use it without leaving the roof, making the whole process safer, faster and hassle-free. Right, tool envy satisfied, caffeine levels restored. It was time to hit the inverter halls. And let's just say inverter manufacturers are stepping things up. From compact residential units to grid scale systems, innovation was everywhere. First stop, Anchor. The Solix X1, which we recently reviewed, was front and center. Good news for installers, it's now compatible with agile tariffs from energy suppliers. It can also be supplied with a CT clamp installation option, offering more flexibility. But while the X1 was doing its thing, uh, Gary was visibly distracted by a concept that's booming in Germany, balcony solar. It's a plug and play solar setup, no electrician required. Just plug it in and you're generating power. Anchor is leading the way with the Solar Bank 3, a smart, flexible system designed for renters and apartment dwellers. Now Gary's on a one man mission to find out what's stopping this from taking off in the UK. And yes, he's already been asking a few awkward questions to regulators. Next, Sunsync, one of the most popular inverter brands in the UK and beyond. Their new Sunsync mobile range is a cost-effective hybrid solution. It's easy to install, scalable, and ideal for a range of applications, but it doesn't stop there. Conductify, their new AI-powered energy management platform, is launching soon. It's designed to maximize self-consumption and optimize dynamic grid tariffs. It's smart tech for smarter energy use. Then Huawei, they've expanded the Fusion Solar range with the new SmartGuard. This sleek unit provides whole house power backup in the event of a grid failure. It gives installers the flexibility to separate and prioritize essential loads and now supports three-phase installations, making it suitable for larger homes or light commercial setups. For UK installers, there's more good news. It comes in a robust steel enclosure, helping meet UK wiring regulations straight out of the box. And speaking of protection, adding surge protection to solar arrays isn't always easy, especially when space is limited. That's why the award-winning PV inline from Weidmuller stood out. It connects directly into the MC4 cabling system. It's compact, mounts neatly along alongside the array or within cable ducting. It's available in single and twin string configurations, tidy solution to a common installer headache, and finally smart energy integration. More and more users want to go beyond the inverter. That's where Shelly comes in. Their platform already integrates with Anchor and Huawei apps, but now they've gone a step further. They've introduced a new energy monitoring system. It clips directly onto circuit breakers, allowing precise circuit level monitoring. It's similar to the Schneider power tag, which we've reviewed before, but this version comes with Shelly pricing and an open source platform. It's ideal for integrators, power users, and anyone who wants full control over their home energy use. And that was just day one. We covered a solid two thirds of the show. Plenty of tech, tools, and talking. As we attempted to leave, a few of the larger stands started serving beer. Naturally, we stayed for hospitality reasons. We met fellow visitors, chatted with exhibitors, and in the spirit of good networking, we felt obliged to keep drinking. Despite earlier complaints about tired feet, Gary rallied after a couple of pilsners and treated the hall to some textbook dad dancing. Opinions were formed, contacts were made. Day two began with another epic journey from the hotel. This time we were mentally prepared, ready to take on the sheer scale of the halls dedicated to solar panels. To the outside world, you could argue that once you've seen one solar panel, you've seen them all. They all look pretty similar, and with manufacturers locked in a battle to claim the highest efficiency and power output numbers, it can be hard to tell what really matters. It's easy to top the the charts, just make a bigger panel. And that's a trend we've definitely seen in recent years. Early on, I thought I'd found the panel power winner, SunTech, with a 745 watt panel, boasting 24% efficiency. Impressive. Until Ico upped the ante with a 775 watt panel and 24.1% efficiency. But they were both pipped to the solar panel post by Tongwei with a record breaking 790 watts and a claimed 25.4% efficiency. If you spotted one with even higher output and better better efficiency, harness your inner Norris McWaiter and let us know in the comments. Of course, ultimate efficiency really matters when you're building a utility scale solar farm where there's plenty of design freedom to create ideal generation conditions. But in many other applications, things aren't so straightforward. You're often working with challenging locations where layout, shading or structural constraints affect performance or where you're balancing power generation with other priorities. That's why we're now seeing a rise in dedicated niche markets for solar PV. 
EV. Take agrivoltaics, for example, where solar panels are integrated alongside agriculture, either out in the fields or even inside greenhouses. This has led to the development of panels that are part clear glass and part solar cells, allowing a percentage of light to pass through for crops while still capturing energy from the rest. Then there's photovoltaics, solar farms built on lakes and reservoirs, helping avoid the use of valuable farmland and even reducing evaporation from the water surface. We had a detailed look at one such system from Issa Floating, a smart, scalable approach to generating clean energy on water. Speaking of water, we spotted a growing trend, combining solar PV with solar thermal in a single panel. Just when you thought it was safe to go up on the roof with electricity, the plumbers show up. Now, solar water heating isn't new, but integrating it directly with PV cells in the same panel, that's still a relatively new market. There are clear advantages. By pumping water through the panel, you actually cool the PV cells, which can help maintain higher generation efficiency, especially on hot days. But to really benefit from this technology, you need the right use case, typically sites with a consistent demand for hot water. We saw examples of this concept across several stands, but one that stood out was the PVT hybrid module from Sunmax. It's already being used in industrial applications, often paired with heat pumps to support process heating on a large scale. Water can cause other problems too, particularly for solar panels installed on shallow roof inclines. While most panels are self-cleaning on steep roofs, low angle installations can trap dust and debris, especially due to the outer frame of the panel. Over time, this buildup causes an effect similar to shading, which can reduce panel efficiency. The solution, keep it simple, ditch the frame, and that's exactly what DAH Solar have done. Their frameless panel design helps avoid the issue altogether. Of course, mounting flat panels can be tricky in some situations. We're still amazed by the DIY balcony solar market scale in Germany. Just imagine hauling a huge solar panel up a narrow apartment stairwell, then hanging over the balcony to mount it. That's where flexible solar panels come in. They're lighter in weight, can bend to suit different mounting geometries, and often don't require extra structural support. That makes them an excellent option for all sorts of unconventional installations. Now, that flexibility does come at the cost of lower efficiency, but in many use cases, that's a secondary concern. We were especially impressed by the range from Wari, who it turns out are India's largest solar panel producers. Of course, there are times when you can have too much sunlight, specifically when it comes to glare. This is an important consideration when planning installations, as glare can affect neighbouring buildings and in some cases pose serious safety risks. Airports are a prime example. Glare can interfere with pilots during aircraft landings, so any installations near airports are tightly regulated and must include formal glare assessments. To help mitigate the issue, Longy has developed an award-winning module with minimal light reflection designed to reduce glare while still maintaining high efficiency. It's another innovative example of how manufacturers are adapting to meet the demands of specific and sensitive applications. Of course, for many people, especially when dealing with historical buildings, protected sites, or architect-designed homes, the problem with solar isn't technical, it's aesthetic. And that's where the niche of BIPV comes in, building integrated photovoltaics. From what we saw, solar panel manufacturers are getting seriously creative, able to hide PV cells in almost anything. We saw PV paving panels in just about every color and pattern imaginable, designed to blend into building cladding or even into integrate directly into glazing systems. But for traditional buildings, the biggest opportunity is clear solar that looks like a tiled roof. That's a major focus for Megasol, who've developed a well-designed roof tile system that addresses two key challenges. Efficient PV production and the most important function of any roof is keeping water out. The level of detail is impressive. Not only does the system mimic the look of real roof tiles, it also includes special installation tiles. These can be cut to fit, but still maintain a clean black edge. So the whole roof keeps its visual consistency, even at the tricky bits. As the price of solar PV continues to fall, we're seeing more and more creative applications emerge. At this point, it's fair to say that solar companies are like drug smugglers. They can hide the product in almost anything. We saw solar fencing systems, solar canopies, and even solar paving. It's clear the technology is no longer limited to just rooftops. But what did we miss? Are you using a solar product that the wider community should know about? Or have you had experience with any of the solutions we've featured? Let us know in the comments or better still tell us in person at the next InterSolar in Munich next June. And if you do, hopefully we can share a beer together. 